So I joined IFAD only at the end of uh, 2020. And so in 20, 2021 was actually my first full year at IFAD. And um, I thought it was a very defining year, not just for me, of course, but also for the globe. The first thing was the pandemic. And it was very interesting for me to see both um, partly as an outsider who had just come into the institution and partly as an insider to see how IFAD responded. I think the key thing that stuck out for me from IFAD as I saw IFAD go forward was how agile and responsive we were as an institution. And I think this is one of IFAD's comparative advantages. The fact that we can be extremely agile uh, in the context of crisis and when we are thinking about resilience and when we are thinking about responses. The response that IFAD made, both in terms of the Rural Poor Stimulus Facility, when there was, were increasing levels of malnutrition, when there was acute food insecurity, um, I think was a fractal image of the crisis response that we've done this year. And that's why I think the first thing that I would bring out for from 2021 was the rapid response that we did, even though we are not a humanitarian agency and even though we're an aggregator of finance. I think the second thing that stood out for me in 2021 was the way we responded with evidence. The Rural Development Report 2021 was a flagship uh, publication that we brought out. And almost presciently, it talked about something that we are taking forward as part of the evidence base for responding to crisis as well as conflict, which is invest in markets. The Rural Development Report helped us to underscore that markets, even in conflicts, even in situations that have been affected by climate-related events, work. And these things are important even when there is no money flowing around. So barter economies work and they help to smooth out consumption. They help to get people what they need during periods of crisis. So investing in markets and in agricultural midstreams, which take uh, the form of investments, not just in increasing agricultural productivity, but also helping us to ensure that our investments are reaching those that are otherwise undernourished, but also malnourished, are really key. Because both investing in markets means that we are affecting the way that production is occurring, but also the patterns of production that are occurring. So the Rural Development Report 2021 was clearly key and a great milestone for IFAD. I think the third thing that I want to really underscore as a milestone for 2021 was our focus on climate. For the first time in 2021, IFAD got a pavilion at Glasgow at COP26, and it helped to underscore IFAD as a leader in the climate adaptation space. We have been working in the context of smallholder farmers for years, but it was the first time that we could really take our comparative advantage in terms of how we aggregate uh, the finance needs of smallholder farmers, how we bring them and link them to financial institutions, and how we work through our sovereign and non-sovereign operations to really bring the smallholder farmers and the rural poor that are constituting currently the majority of the population of the world to the forefront in terms of financial access, in terms of land tenure considerations, in terms of nutrition, in terms of getting them rights and really making their presence felt in the decision making that takes that is taken on at the global level. In this context, we also participated and played an active role with the Food System Summit. And the Food System Summit Hub is, I think, a reflection of our keen participation and our contribution to the agenda for resilience. I think resilience got underscored in almost all of our initiatives in 2021. Last but not least, it would be remiss for me to not mention the key role that evidence has played in what IFAD has done and continues to do. 
in 2021, we got rated by several agencies across the world as the key agency to engage with if we want credible impacts. And this is really going to be the mainstay of what we take forward as we think about carbon markets, as we think about climate finance, and as we think about responding to the multiple crises that unfortunately but inevitably the world is going to face as we go forward. Thanks very much.